Did Kirby Smart just find Carson Beck's replacement? This is Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it's time for the Atlanta Football Party, only on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to our Atlanta Football Party, your home for the best Georgia Bulldogs talk. It's local insight you can't get anywhere but right here at Locked On. I'm your host, Tanitra Batiste, and here with me are Jarvis Davis and Brian Gephardt. This episode of our Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks. If your bet wins. So to get started, go to fanduel.com slash locked on again. It's fanduel.com slash locked on. And of course, this Atlanta football party is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, someone must have missed the memo from Gainesville to Athens. We're going to talk about that when we go between the hedges. And Stetson gets a second chance in next up. But first, guys, we're going to talk about how the dogs handle a big commit. And maybe a big decommit over the weekend. Now, Jarvis, we got a bit of good news. You know, I always love it. And we talked about it in pre-production when I see my tweet notification that says two words, go dogs, because that means <laughs> that something big is indeed happening in Athens. And that, of course, usually comes from Kirby Smart's Twitter account. And it was about a big get in that number one quarterback prospect for 2026, Jared Curtis announced his commitment so that was huge over the weekend and it's funny because guys we don't normally think about a quarterback stable if you will uh, down in Athens but this is big in continuing to expand a quality quarterback room yeah when you think about what Jared Curtis bringing to the table if you said look up a West Western dictionary and there's a picture of prototype quarterback <laughs> that is Jared Curtis 6'4 225 pounds no man. question Obviously got a big arm, so that was like a true pocket quarterback, uh, NFL prototype, uh, so to speak. So I think that it's fitting that they are bringing that type of guy in. This is for the 2026 class. It's the first recruit that they have, obviously five-star quarterback, so it's a pretty big deal. I just think that overall, like, I think they need to start, you know, thinking about the future because they don't have anybody in that 2025 class committed yet. So when you think about – them knowing that they want to do that because we know what Carson Beck is. He's going to the NFL this year. I think that's nobody's going to argue against that. So I think right now it's all about who's going to be Carson Beck's predecessor. Is that going to be Ryan Police? Is he going to hold it down for one year and Jared Curtis come in? Or are they going to flip Juju Lewis from USC in? And he's going to come in and start wowing coaches in Mike Bowden like, oh, yeah, this needs to be our guy. So I think Kirby Smart is always – as he normally does, he's playing chess, not checkers, and trying to figure out what the things looks like once Carson Beck is gone. Yeah. Yeah. And Jericho, it's it what's interesting now is can they hold on to this kid? You know, so much right. can happen in two years with what he's we going on in recruiting. Like he could <laughs> he could be, you know, decommitted and commit to three more schools and then be back to Georgia. So it just seems like the dogs are always in the mix with these with these top level quarterbacks, but may not necessarily hold on to it when we talk about like the top of the top of the cream, you know, of the crop, if you will. Um, so I'm curious to see if they're able to keep him, if he actually does come in here in two years. And like Jarvis was saying, who else they wind up adding, you know, because they're going to continue to have to add names, but uh, it's a big get for the moment. And hopefully he's someone that they're able to hang on to. Yeah. And you got to wonder what happens in 2024 that may dictate whether or not they hold on to him. Now, of course, we are not wishing any ill will because we want Carson Beck to be the guy who is the Heisman Trophy front runner that he is now. We want him to continue that throughout the 2024 season, which means he pretty much has to stay healthy. But if something happens to where Ryan Puglisi has to take over, then that could dictate as well, right, what happens. You just never know. Or, hey, it is only March. You never know who may make a transfer and decommit from somewhere else and land themselves in Athens. So, so many things could happen in the next two years. But the fact that Georgia is now a school where these top prospect quarterbacks are actually saying, hey, we want to be a part of that program. I think that's huge because Georgia's we, we may have called them running back. You RBU. Yes. Linebacker. You. Yes. QBU, not so much. So I think that this is a huge get for them. And I think it's also a positive because you kind of juxtapose that on the flip side to where you do think about this 
Georgia's, it's like a, a well-oiled machine, if you will. Like every time we look up at some four-star or five-star defensive player who's actually yep. committing or flipping to Georgia, not flipping away. But Brian, this weekend we got the news that the five-star D tackle Justice Terry actually flipped from Georgia to USC. And I thought about the fact that that's an interesting one because we don't hear that very often on the defensive side of the ball. How big of a loss is it for a guy that has been described as a potential bully in the middle? This one kind of just perked my ears up a little bit, just in the sense of like, all right, this is a defensive lineman that just got taken from Georgia. It wasn't it wasn't a quarterback or it wasn't a wide receiver or one of these other spots where it's like, okay, all these other schools are kind of in the mix. And also USC maybe finally committing to getting some defensive players and realizing, you know, because you look at their pedigree over the last 10, 15 years or so, they're not pumping out defensive players like they used to back in those like early, you know, Pete Carroll days and, and prior to that as well so I think it's big in the sense of the position itself and we didn't see that necessarily that dominance from the defensive line last year with Georgia so losing a guy like this um isn't isn't great you know and and they need to get back to that level especially in the in the run game and stopping the run like you always expect them to be right at the top um and this one's definitely going to hurt a little bit yeah yeah and, and when you think about Bear Alexander making making that uh that, that jump out to USC uh um Brian, I think that's one of the things that you you think about as far as like okay, well, he, I think he had one. He had some. He had a very good season as far as tackles go, but he only ended up like one and a half sacks. And we understand like what four first round draft picks that Georgia has put out in these last couple of years. So you kind of question it because this was his. This was um Justice Terry's first visit to USC, and you know me. I know exactly where my mind goes. If he's visiting this place for the first time, he he, he, saw, he saw that bag. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. uh, he did just like Bear did. Bear like, oh, y'all trying to give how much? Yeah. yeah let me go ahead and uh, commit for right now. But And I think that, you know, this even happened with Michael Williams, right? Because he he had committed, you know, decommitted, then, and then ended up coming back with uh, Georgia in 2022. So I think I, I wouldn't be concerned. I, it's just like uh, BG mentioned, like, Holding on to Curtis, you know, until 2026. Like so much can happen. So many bads can be passed out and offered uh, between now and then. So I think that once Terry understands like the whole development piece and what that looks like the, yeah. um, going into the yeah. NFL, and and because Kirby, I feel like Kirby's gonna stay in it. He's gonna stay in this. He's gonna stay on him. And I think that seeing some guys that have gone through this Georgia system and, and end up being first round draft picks for within the last two drafts, yeah, you got to say, okay, you know what? That bag might be nice. I might, I'm going to get a decent bag at Georgia, but I'm also going to get some good teaching. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what I think about, too. Like, the dollars may look good in the short term. And don't right. get me wrong, that NIL money is long for some. But sure. – the NFL money is even longer. So mm -hmm. got to kind of look at the end game. So, and of course, I'm just giving out random numbers here, but what if your NIL deal in Athens would have been two mil, right? And then your NL deal out in Southern California would have been like four mil. That's fine. But if you are moving up and we know how it goes. Taxes. <laughs> taxes are going to get you. Hey, I was just out there. I was just out there. Those taxes will get you. Those taxes yes. will get you. Okay? Right. I'm sure you know, PG. Right. More importantly, who at USC is going to develop you into maybe a top 10, 15 prospect? And we know in the first round of the NFL draft, where you land could dictate what that contract looks like. So sometimes you hope that these guys have people around them that will kind of show them the bigger picture. But yeah, I don't think this story is completely written. It was a shock, kind of a surprise to me as well. But yeah, I think there's a little bit more to this story that needs to be told. I know that we're following it. And as we know with Kirby Smart, one of the ways that he's able to flip players is by staying the course and hey, look, it's only March of 2024. We shall see what happens now. Speaking of flipping, sometimes you flip folks that don't seem to understand or get the memo when they make a move from point A to point B. We're going to talk about that. This story continues to develop. We even got further details on it today, but we'll definitely talk more about what that means to the running back room for UGA on the other side. This episode of our Atlanta football party is brought to you by FanDuel and also eBay Motors. So let's talk FanDuel first, guys. Now, 
I think most people have said goodbye to their brackets. They're busted, busted, and more busted, unless you're still looking towards the end because, hey, all four number ones and all four number twos are still in it for the men's basketball tournament. So that's where FanDuel comes in because they'll let you bet on every game that's a part of this tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset, which we only saw a couple in the round of 32, or whether you're betting on a one seed, you still got four options left. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get two hundred dollars in bonus bets if your first five dollar bet wins that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads money lines you can even pick who's gonna win it also if you think it's uconn go for it you think it's u of h go for it if you think it's purdue or north carolina carolina go for it because FanDuel will allow for that but no of course Fandom with uh, Fandle. It's fandle.com slash locked on. That's where you can bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets in about two and a half weeks. Again, that's fandle.com slash locked on to bet on college hoops. This episode of our Atlanta football party is also brought to you by eBay. Now, you guys, if you were paying any attention to last night's Hawks game, or if you pay attention to any UGA game that's coming up this season, including probably the red and black game that's coming up in a few weeks, it's all about patience. It's all about drive. It's all about passion. That's what brings home winning championships. That's what brings you back from a 30 point deficit. And that of course is what keeps your ride or die alive with eBay. They have everything you need. Why and how? Because if you have 122 million parts, it's probably nothing that you're missing. So that can be an LED kit, headlights that can be something for under the hood or in my case it can be some really really nice seat covers to kind of upgrade your car and they have what's called guaranteed fit i can tell you from experience with my 2009 honda pilot that my seat covers fit perfectly so every time you need something you go right to ebay it's a good look for you to spend cash but not burn cash, burn some rubber. With all the parts you need, you can turn your car into an MVP. You can keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only and exclusions do apply. eBay guarantee fit is only available to U.S. customers. So guys, just a week ago, we were giving flowers last week, the week before, the week before that on the Atlanta football party for Trevor Atien, just excited about what he was going to bring to the running back room, right, Brian? And still can, but we got word early this weekend that the Florida transfer now has some issues that are all too familiar in Athens, right? Uh, arrested on reckless driving and DUI charges and also obstructing with things that were in his car, probably tinted windows, to be honest with you. So now you're looking at a headline that I'm sure Kirby Smart did not anticipate seeing this spring, especially not from Trevor Etienne, whom he's also given high praise to. Brian, what do you think this is going to be in terms of however this now, now how it plays out may end up being determined by if the charges stick, if the charges are reduced, et cetera, et cetera. Ultimately speaking, how might this fallout there be fallout for Trevor? But I was also thinking for the program overall. Yeah, it's just another situation where this has been a big, a big, big issue, uh, you know, everywhere in college football, but especially in Athens. They've had a rough time with this the last few years, and it's it's a bad look. It's a bad situation. It was a mistake on, on his part. I think the toughest part for him and the program is going to be, OK, we're in late March right now, and this is the big you know, transfer recruit, you know, we're talking about Heisman dark horse could be potentially the best running back in the sec. And now you're going to have five plus months of, Oh, ETN, the DUI kid, you know, like that's going to be what's associated with him until he's able to play a game. And chances are, depending on how this plays out, he, he'll most likely be suspended for one game. And it'll be that Clemson game. So that first time to come out in Atlanta, sec, ACC matchup, first time he's wearing, you know, that probably won't happen anymore. And then he'll kind of fall, off the radar even even more. Um, so this is one of those things where if it happened in the middle of August, uh, you know, you hate to say it in this way, but it would almost like go away in a couple weeks. Whereas now it's going to be five and a half months until he actually plays. So it's just going to be sticking with him uh, right there. Um, I mean, I think what it does too is maybe puts a little pep in the step for those other running backs too. Like, hey, you might be, we're going to need you early and often yeah. uh, because, you know, ETM might not be out there against that first game against Clemson. Yeah. And I was thinking the same thing, Jarvis, like this is a slow news cycle right mm -hmm. now. And coupled with the fact that 
for the most part, that narrative around UGA has died out for a couple of months, but it was always that smoldering thing, right? Just kind of simmering, just news outlets waiting to hear if another player got caught in this situation. So yeah, I feel like this is one of those where, yeah, probably didn't come at the greatest time for, for this program. Yeah, because here here we are, Devin Willocks and Chandler, um, Chandler, <clears throat> Chandler's name are being evoked right now. You know, um, when you and Chandler the Pro, excuse me. So when you think about those two names coming back up, it's just like, all right, oh well, y'all haven't learned y'all lesson just yet. And I think this is gonna be a lesson that Trevor's gonna have to learn. Like, hey, you can probably get away with being in trouble about certain things, but this is yeah. not one of them. <laughs> because <laughs> because when you talk about lawsuits and stuff coming from the families of, of the deceased and just so much stuff that Kirby has had to deal with that's non-football related. It's just not a, a situation that Georgia wants to continue to have to handle. And I think that Trevor is going to learn and he's going to learn by have, being out for that first game. I'm, I'll go ahead and go ahead and say that, hey, he's more than likely going to be suspended for that game. So mm -hmm. regardless of how charges being reduced or anything, because I feel like Kirby has to understand and, and get that message, because I think one thing that I, I, I you can really appreciate, especially if you're a Georgia Bulldogs fan, is the fact that, hey, he knows that he's going to compete for a, compete for a championship. He knows that he's going to be highlighted and be able to – people are going to see his value and, hey, he is a RB1. But Indeed. also, this is a part of it, right? This is a part of getting a, a acclimated to the culture. You yeah. can't be going around reckless driving and passing folks on double yellow lines and all that stuff. Like, we got the details that came out, came out earlier today. It's just – you can't do that. You just can't do it. And like you said, this is going to be a lesson learned for Trevor. And hopefully, hopefully – this yeah. is the last time he has to learn his lesson. Yeah, and like you all said, Branson Robinson, your number's being called. Branson Robinson, your number's being called. But line one. <laughs> but yeah, Branson Robinson, line one. But yeah, ultimately, I think you make a great point, too. And I wanted to just circle back and ask the question as well from a teammate perspective, right? Because remember, one of the things that he said on one of the uh, Dogs podcasts of recent was how much cohesion and connectivity he saw in the running back room and really in the locker room for this team Overall, and I'm thinking to myself, like, yes, Kirby will have to have a word with him, but I think this team is going to have to have a word with him as well and basically say, hey, man, look, we brought you into the culture that you said you had a lot of respect for, and we don't need any side stories, right? We're trying to get back to a championship, and that's what you said you want to win. So I feel like hopefully the, and I, I'd want to use the cliche term, but hopefully kind of the brotherhood will sit back and say, man, here's what this means. It's a trigger when national media, when it hits the national media, and it's mm -hmm. a trigger around college football when there's recklessness, but this is a different kind of trigger. This hits different when it comes to Athens. Yeah, those actions speak louder than words in those situations where you got to buck up and, and and be that leader, and they need him in that room. I mean, yeah. Th yeah. there's not that – they don't have that other guy and they don't have that other thing. Not if it was, a, you know, a different position group. He should, you know, behaving and carrying himself in a certain way too. Now I think what will be interesting is, okay, he was on this podcast – this happened, the hype train sort of, all right, well, we're probably never going to see him in the media. Like the next time we're going to hear from ETN is going to be the middle yeah. of September in the or, first game right. that he actually plays. Because I don't think we hear a peep from him between now and then, besides maybe sending out some sort of apology or or whatever it is once the dust settles. And I and I think, T, I think you bring make an excellent point. When you have your players, like being in the college football, play, playing in college football and being in a locker room, and when you get to the point where, the guys in the locker room are actually poli quote unquote policing the guys. That's yeah. how you know you have a culture, an established culture. And I think yeah. that more than likely these guys are going to have those conversations because it's just it's just how it works. It's just how it works when when you are have that championship culture and people understand the gravity of what happened back then and and now and trying to figure out how to move forward without these stories popping up again. Yeah, yeah, and you're right the gravity of it, maybe when you're not physically in that space and you didn't have to walk through it each and every day for the last year and some change, maybe not to say that Trevor ATN disrespects the memories of Devin Willick and Chandler LaCroix, but we need to understand just how this hits different in Athens versus say Gainesville or anywhere else in the country. You know, it's interesting as well, because you guys talk about, you know, that culture and you talk about the depth in that running back room, both on the field and off the field. And the D line of course is another one of those areas where there's a strength and always has been for this UGA team, this program. So you think about what Jared Wilson had to say recently about how 
the vaunted defense of the years past was able to push that O-line to the next level. Because remember, as much as we've talked D-line, we always compliment it with conversation about the mm -hmm. O-line. But V, do you think that this D-line has that kind of potential to be able to push this O-line to the excellence that Jared Wilson spoke of? I think they have the potential, but I think it's potential right now. I don't think they're they're quite there yet. I mean, they need those people to to step up in those spots. And you know, I know we talk about like a like a guy like a Michael Williams in terms of taking it to that to that next level with it, because you know now we are a few years removed from that that vaunted defensive line, and it really is. It has been the offensive line that's been more of a strength than the defensive line over the last couple of seasons there in Athens. It'd be nice to have that balance again. So. Um, I think they have the ability to do that, but I don't think they're quite there yet. And I think one of the things that I thought Jared, what Jared brought up, this goes back to just being being able to go against really good competition in practice. Like Jared Wilson talked about how um, um, Jordan Davis used to kick his butt. Like all mm -hmm. that stuff, it matters. And even Coach, Coach, um, Coach Mark Kirby um, brought it up as well when he's talking about Amarius Mims. Like, yeah. He only started, you know, what, 27 games, you know, in, in college. But guess who he was going up against? Devontae Wyatt, uh, Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter. All those guys are going up against each other on one-on-ones every single day. Yeah. When you have that type of talent, it it goes to show. It's why this, this is why this offensive line is already uh, is one of the best in the country right now. Because those guys go against NFL talent every day. You ain't got no choice but to get better or you just won't play. So and that's the kind of the group that's kind of like the 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 big piece of it. Right. So, yeah, I think Wilson is is spot on because he's replacing Cedric Van Pran Granger. Right. Like that's he's an mm -hmm. NFL prospect, a legit NFL prospect. So he's that's what he had to, to, to compete with. And also he's competing with guys with NFL talent on the other side of the ball. So I, th I feel like the offensive line is going to be the catalyst. For this team, at least for the, for the moment, and they're going to help these young guys who need to step up on the defense side of the ball as well. Can you imagine being 18, 19 years old as an offensive lineman stepping in just going <laughs> yeah. the ball, and then all of a sudden you got one on ones with Jordan Davis and or Wyatt and Walker <laughs> and Carter? Like I don't know if people like the gap that they dealt with from that year to year is Ooh. that's insane. Like that's yes. just that's just nuts. So. Um, you know, I think in that regard, too, he's definitely ready for the moment because once you go up, you're not – I mean, yes, you're going to play some really good defensive linemen in the SEC. You're not going to face a lot of 21-year-old – Brian, hold, you know, hold, 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 hold on, Brian, hold on, Brian. You know hold what I mean? On. You're being nice right now. <laughs> Vanderbilt defensive linemen ain't got nothing <laughs> going on. Uh, yeah. Even Kentucky, so, they ain't got nothing going on. Mm -hmm. But these cats are facing the best competition yeah. that they're going to face. And I'll, unless they're going, you know, now that with Alabama on the schedule, that might might be a little different. But we just talking about the schedule that they've been playing for the last three or four years. Mm -hmm. They're not going to face anybody better. So, yeah, this is – you're talking about iron sharpening iron. Like, that is not just a cliche down in Athens. That is the real deal, Jack. <laughs> yeah, and th the other thing I was thinking of, too, is this O-line, this program has pride. Each of the position groups, they have mm -hmm. pride. I thought about – everyone and i know michigan was the eventual champion last season but i thought about the fact that they were also recognized as the best o-line in the country you don't think they heard that down in athens you don't think they got the demo? so you know that's some bulletin board material for them as well i'm feeling like so you know speak so that o-line at least those guys who are coming back they have an opportunity a second chance to prove that they really are the best o-line in the country and another dog has a second chance we'll talk about it on the other side Folks, let me listen up real quick. Let me tell y'all something. I've been wrecking my brain trying to figure out what do the folks need? What do the folks want on this subtext, right? Join subtext.com slash Locked On Sports Atlanta and become a Locked On Sports Atlanta insider today. I've been breaking down all the top prospects in the NFL draft. They're going to have so much more coming up as we get closer to the draft and also during the season as well. And guess what, guys? It's a free two-week trial. So if you sign up, it's all good. If you don't like it, that's cool. But if you do, it's $4.99 a month. Come on, man. What, 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 what are we talking about here? That's a cup of coffee at Starbucks, maybe? <laughs> so, yeah, make sure you guys go to uh, joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Sports Atlanta. And if you didn't get that website because I was fumbling through it, just go ahead and tap that, that description box. This episode of the Atlanta Football Party is brought to you by 
Nissan, guess what, guys? When you think about what Nissan brings to the table, you talk about the Pathfinder, you're talking about the, the uh, Armada, which is one of my fa absolute favorites. Oh, oh, my gosh, it's just absolutely amazing. And when you think about what stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, right? And then March Madness, just like any of the all 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to make take it to the next level. And when you're talking about the North Carolina Tar Heels, can't, can't only be described as an Armada because you're talking about big dog program, blue bloods, right? And I love the Armada. When I jump in that thing, I feel like I just get swallowed up. Like, I love space, and Nissan Armada is the exact type of car if you're looking for that space, right? So they're the favorite. Is the pick be picked right by the North Carolina Tar Heels? They're the favorite, so make sure you check them out and take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. And if you don't like the Armada, go ahead and check out the Nissan Pathfinder. T can tell you about that one because you know how reliable the Pathfinder has been around for so long, as far as back as I can remember. So make sure you check out these SUVs, the 2024 SUVs, and shop. NissanUSA.com. Uh, yep, that Pathfinder was my first SUV, and yes, that Armada will swallow you whole. No yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a good vehicle. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, God. Oh, we love someone is that gets a second chance. We're always rooting for someone to get a second chance. So, got a good word about Stetson Bennett, excuse me, possibly getting a second chance, likely getting a second chance to realize his NFL dreams with the Rams after missing last season for some undisclosed reasons. But ultimately, the Rams GM, Les Snead, confirmed for the LA Times that the plan is to bring him back to take part in off-season workouts. So Jarvis, I thought that was a feel-good story because, hey, everybody deserves an opportunity to try to pursue their dreams. Absolutely, because, you know, and for personal reasons, we know what, the, and obviously been a lot of speculation about what those personal reasons are. And I'm not going to go and get into them, but when you think about taking time out for yourself and understanding what you want to do with your life, because at the end of the day, does Stetson Bennett have to play football anymore? <laughs> he can retire to Athens and just figure out what he wants to do with his life. And he's going to get plenty of opportunity to do that. But if, if it's in the NFL and, and that's what he wants to pursue or and continue to pursue his football career, I really feel like he should have an opportunity to do that. And, you know, putting yourself first and, and getting yourself together to be able to go out and accomplish that feat, because we all know how hard the NFL is. And especially, especially when you play in that quarterback spot, he needs to have all the focus in the world. If he wants to uh, make a team and, and, and be able to go out there and be have some success, especially yeah. and show and prove to Les Need and company that, hey, I belong and I deserve a roster spot. And I think that it's cool that he's going to be able to get another chance. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, all that's good. And I like I hope he's handling his personal stuff and everything. But it's just like it's time to grow up, man. It's you're, you're 26. Like I'm actually I'm actually like I don't even know if he knows how lucky he is to get this next opportunity, like to yeah. have this, back. like I wouldn't have been surprised if he never got another chance to, to be in the league, but um, you know, they're not going to invite you back next year. If you screw up again this year, like this is it. So if you really want to make this a profession and really want to do this and not go, cause of course you could just go be back to Athens and be the mayor and whatever you want in the state of Georgia. But um, sure. man, go, go do this. You got to understand the opportunity that's at hand right now. Like go, Go conquer this thing. Go make a roster. Go go do this, you know, um, and, and have an opportunity at a real future here. Yeah. Talk to a good damn dog in Matthew Stafford. He'll tell you yeah. about staying the course and keeping your head above water and kind of keeping out of, you know, the mess of the minutiae, if you will, and how it can lead you not only to a successful career, but in his case, borderline Hall of Fame and, of course, NFL Super Bowl champion. And speaking of champion, we want to wish the dogs on the basketball side of things, the men's basketball team, of course, is headed into a big game against Ohio State in the NIT tonight. So hopefully those guys will take away a win. They are truly back to playing some good basketball. So hopefully we're having some good conversation about them next week. But listen, we appreciate you guys for stopping by the Atlanta football party. As always, you can go and check us out on our YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe when you're there as well. And don't forget that we are free and available wherever you download your podcast. Podcasts. We'll see you on the Atlanta Sports Party come Thursday.